In the late afternoon of the 16th of March 1966, the crew of Gemini 8 made history by achieving the first docking of two spacecraft in orbit. Minutes later, disaster would strike the crew, leaving them with no option but to abort the mission altogether and return to Earth. The Gemini 8 mission was the sixth crewed spaceflight of NASA's Gemini program. The primary objective of the mission was to perform the first docking of two spacecraft in orbit, demonstrating the crucial capability needed for future Apollo missions to the Moon. The crew consisted of Command Pilot Neil Armstrong and Pilot David Scott. Both astronauts has no previous experience in spaceflight but this mission will pave the way for both Armstrong and Scott to become commanders of the Apollo 11 and Apollo 15 missions respectively. T-minus 18 holding momentarily, now resuming the count. T-minus 15. T minus 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. We have ignition. There's ignition, and the Atlas rocket showers its pad with a bright burst of flames. It's airborne now, and it's rising into the sky, a beautiful liftoff. It's a smooth flight. Everything is going uh, as it should be. You can now hear the thunder as it sweeps across our NBC The Agena target vehicle for the Gemini 8 mission launched from the Kennedy Space Center Launch Complex 14 at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. was a perfect success and the Agena entered orbit. Gemini 8 would be launched one hour and 41 minutes later.
she goes. The half million pounds of jet thrust, there she goes, high, high, ever higher. The launch of the Gemini 8 mission was perfect. And with their goal ahead, Armstrong and Scott travelled to the Agena target vehicle. Three hours after launch, the crew spotted the Agena 140 kilometres ahead. Scott switched the computer from the catch-up to the rendezvous mode and watched the distance dwindle automatically. And with the relative velocity at zero, the second rendezvous in the Gemini program had been achieved. After Gemini rendezvoused with Agena, Scott inspected the Agena, checking for any faults that might pose a risk during the docking sequence. Armstrong was piloting the Gemini spacecraft, ensuring it stayed within the vicinity of Agena. The Agena was stable, and with that, Capcom radioed. You looking good on the ground? Go ahead and dock. Uh, that's the correct load? Uh, that's affirmative. 354 is the correct time with no CGMTS. Okay, uh, both PR and coincidence time, Marine, all X's. 
NASA affirmative. Alrighty. Go with your GMTRC to set up your clean. Okay, we're going to go off now. Off this SPC thing until he does get docked. Okay, go ahead with your memory compel. Roger. Let's okay, know what you get out of that. See, it's a very long time. Here, let me shut down. Same thing, however, is we were quite stable. We did both brought in, they were quite stable. We're getting further and further into darkness, but we didn't have time to readjust the cameras. So, uh, these, okay, uh, we have a rigid light getting stuck right now. Like they have. Say again. Above the status of the panel, which tells us about the condition of the genus. Okay, Gemini 8, it looks good here from the ground. We're showing well and rigid. Everything looks good from the dock. Okay, we're going to cycle our stop on switch. Roger. The flight, we are done. He's really a smoothie. At night. Uh, oh, Roger. Uh, right hey, congratulations. This is real good. At 5.14 p.m., more than six hours and 30 minutes after launch, the Gemini 8 succeeded in becoming the first spacecraft to dock with another spacecraft in outer space. The mood of the crew and mission control was ecstatic. But that mood won't last for long. Are you aware of the problem we had with the memory compel? Okay, we've just uh, like a status report from the crew here. Roger. How's it look? Say again? Did I 
Did I hear him say he may have a stuck hand controller? That's affirmative, The Gemini rolled, pitched and yawed for over 20 minutes. The violent tumbling of the spacecraft was only stopped when Armstrong activated the re-entry control system thrusters, or RCS. Procedure calls for the immediate landing of the crew once the RCS thrusters are activated. Not wanting to risk more harm to the crew, the planned spacewalk and other activities were cancelled. The crew of Gemini 8 landed at the Philippine Sea just 10 hours into the mission, making it the second shortest manned Gemini flight after Gemini 3. The Gemini 8 mission marked NASA's first major in-space failure, and changes were made into the OMS thrusters to ensure that they worked properly on the next four Gemini flights. NASA's investigation procedures were also revised to address critical failures more efficiently. And unfortunately, these new procedures would be initiated less than a year later. I hope you enjoyed my video. Please like, subscribe and share to your friends to help grow my channel. See you next time.